Prostate cancer affects more men than any other cancer. Despite treatment advances, death rates have remained constant for the past 20 years. New agents, which act by inhibiting the actions of the endothelin family of proteins, are in development for the management of prostate cancer. Endothelins occur naturally throughout the body and perform several functions, including promoting cell growth. Attention has focused on its role in prostate cancer partly because its concentration in seminal fluid is about 500 times greater than elsewhere. There are three forms of endothelin. Endothelin 1, 2 and 3. And in normal cell tissue, there are two endothelin receptors, ETA and ETB. These receptors occur in similar numbers on each cell, but perform different tasks. In normal cell activity, the different endothelins are free to bind with either receptor. When endothelin binds with a receptor, the receptor sends a signal into the cell. For example, when endothelin 1 binds to an ETA receptor in vascular smooth muscle cells, the ETA receptor sends a signal causing the blood vessels to contract. When an endothelin-1 molecule binds with an ETB receptor, the result is different. The receptor will again release a signal, but this time it causes blood vessels to dilate rather than constrict. However, this is not the only difference. When endothelin binds to an ETB receptor, the two molecules are taken into the cell itself, and once the endothelin has been internalized, it is no longer present in the circulation. This process actively reduces the concentration of endothelins in the blood. So, how does endothelin behave in cancerous cells, such as those in a prostate tumour? First, the effect of stimulating each type of receptor is different. Binding to ETA in cancer cells causes growth or aids cell survival, while binding to ETB acts as one of the triggers for apoptosis or programmed cell death. Secondly, in comparison to a normal cell, a cancerous cell has far fewer ETB receptors. This downregulation of ETB receptors appears to be part of the disease process. The result is that these cancerous cells grow more and live longer than they should because they miss out on the apoptosis-triggering signal that ETB should have supplied, but still receive the growth signal via ETA. Because endothelin promotes cell growth, treatments are being developed that try to stop cancerous cells growing by preventing endothelin binding with receptors on the cells. Inhibitor drugs bind with the receptor and prevent endothelin exerting its normal effect. Most of these treatments are endothelin selective in that they tend to have a preference for binding to either ETA or ETB, but if present in a high concentration, they will bind to both. There are two risks with inhibiting both receptors. Firstly, these drugs inhibit the positive outcome of binding with ETB because they block the process of apoptosis. Inhibiting ETA may have slowed the cancer's growth, but cells in the tumour are still alive. Secondly, remember that ETB receptors help maintain constant endothelin levels because of the way the protein and the receptor internalise after binding so plasma endothelin levels will rise if you block ETB. The rising levels of endothelin compete with the drug at the ETA receptor and may therefore compromise its activity.